Hello, my name is Benjamin Schmaus, and I'm a field product manager at Red Hat. Today I want to talk about the new UI coming in Quay 3.8. But before I demonstrate that new UI, let's talk about a few things related to it. First, this UI is currently in beta, and it's subject to change. In its current state, users can only create, view, and delete organizations, repositories, and image tags. When running Red Hat Quay in the old UI, timed out sessions would require that the user input their password again in the pop-up window. With the new UI, users are returned to the main page and require, required to input their username and password credentials. This is a known issue and will be fixed in future versions of the new UI. There is also a discrepancy in how image manifest sizes are reported between the legacy UI and the new UI. In the legacy UI, image manifests were reported in mebabytes, or base 2. In the new UI, Red Hat Quay uses the standard definition of megabytes, or base 10, to report image manifest sizes. So that's why you'll see a difference between when switching back and forth. So how do we enable this new UI so we can take a look at what it looks like? Well, what you need to do is you're in your config YAML, like I have here, you need to enable a feature flag. That feature flag is called feature underscore UI underscore V2 and set it to true. And when it's set to that in the config YAML, this will enable the new UI features. So let's take a look at how we look at that. Let's log into the UI. And now you can see we're in the legacy UI right now. But you'll notice in the upper right hand corner, there is a current UI and a new UI toggle button. Let's go ahead and toggle the new UI. When you try to toggle the new UI, you'll be prompted that this is a beta environment and it wants you to confirm that you want to use the beta environment. Click use the beta environment. Once, you, once you've done that, you'll notice that the screens look very similar to what you'd see in an OpenShift console or even a Red Hat Advanced Cluster management screen perspective from UI. So let's explore some of the things we can do in this new UI. One of those was create a new organization. Let's go ahead and click on create organization. I'll go ahead and give it a name, test org, and I'll also give it an email address. And then click create. You can now see that my test org has been created. The next thing that I can do is I can go into that test org and I could create a new repository. Let's click on create repository. And here I'll give it a name, test repo, and I'll give it a description. And then we can select between the, the repository being public or private. Here I'm gonna go ahead and choose private and click create. We now have a private repo called test repo under the test org that we created in the new UI. But I want to change the visibility on that test repo. So let's go ahead and click on the checkbox next to test repo. And then from the actions drop down, we can choose to make it public. It'll prompt you that you want to confirm to make it public. Go ahead and click make public. At this point, the visibility is now set to public. However, we made this repository you know, as a mistake. We shouldn't have created it. So let's go ahead and show how to delete it. Again, I can click on the checkbox, and then from the Actions menu, I can go ahead and click Delete. When you click Delete, it's going to prompt with a confirmation, and you actually need to type the word Confirm, and then click the Delete button and now my repository is gone. Let's go back up to the organization's level. Again, we had created this test org as a mistake, so let's go ahead and delete it. Again, I'll check the checkbox next to it, and then from the Actions menu, I can select Delete. And again, you'll be prompted to Confirm by typing Confirm, and then you can select the Delete button. And now we've deleted the test organization. One of the other features that are new in this UI is the ability to actually delete tagged images. 
To do that, we need to go ahead and demonstrate that from the command line first. We need to get an image actually into our registry we can delete. So first, I'm going to go ahead and log in at the command line here using my OpenShift user and its password. And now that I've logged in, I'm going to go ahead and pull down a BusyBox image local to my machine. Now that I've got the BusyBox image local, I'm going to go ahead and tag it with a tag that'll be within my registry. And once I've done that, I can go ahead and I can push it up to my registry. And we've gone ahead and pushed that up and you can see inside the OpenShift registry now or OpenShift organization, we do have a repo count of one. And it happens to be the busy box repository that we pushed up. But before we go in and look at the tags, well, let's go ahead and change the visibility on it from private to public. And again, it's clicking the checkbox and then from the actions drop down, selecting make public. And again, confirming I want to make it public by clicking on make public. And now the BusyBox um, repository is public. Let's go inside. And here we can see our test tagged image that we pushed up. But again, I want to show you that we could delete this as well. So let's go ahead and check on it. And from the Actions menu, again, select Delete. And it'll confirm, do I want to delete the test tag? And I can go ahead and select Delete. And now that image that I had just pulled up is gone. One of the other things that's changed about the new UI is the security vulnerability report. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Inside the OpenShift 4 organization, I have a Project Quay Claire repo. And inside there, I have a tagged image of Claire for 4.2.3. And there's a few items that are listed under the security. So let's take a look at that report and see what it looks like. When I click on the vulnerabilities, I can see that this Quay security report has detected 59 vulnerabilities in this particular version. And I can see them listed out and what their severity and package is. I can also expand them out to see more details if I want to look at it. It'll also give me information on where this was resolved or how I can resolve it. And if we go over to packages, we can also see that the Quay security reporting has recognized there's 106 packages in this image. And again, it gives me a breakdown of the high vulnerabilities, the mediums, and the lows, and then none detected. jump back to organization, and now let's toggle us back to the legacy UI. And now we are back to the legacy UI. Hopefully this was a useful piece of information to see how to use the new UI in Quay. Again, it still has some limited feature functionality, but there are plans to expand that to scope so that eventually the new UI becomes the default UI for Quay in future versions. Thank you. Bye-bye.